can learn a lot on this program. All right, I'll vouch for that. I'll almost guarantee it. All right, uh, 877-PLANNER is our number. BoomersBrainTrust.com is our website. Dinah Smith is here with me. So, Dinah, we do this every so often, a couple of times a week. Take some of the leftover news items that uh, we've been, actually some of the stuff we've been doing uh, with the uh, first five. And yes. so if you've seen our first five, then you may have seen some of these things. But uh, I was told, now I don't know if you can, maybe you can verify this, I don't know. I was told that Mother's Day is this weekend. It is. So this has actually <laughs> been, this is this is true? It is true, and I forgot. <laughs> you forgot. Well, now I you forgot. don't celebrate Mother's Day? No, we do. It's just we have a no gift rule. I, I love that. I love Although that idea. I don't, I don't know. And my 21-year-old my called last night and said, don't plan anything for Sunday afternoon. Oh, all And right. I said, no skydiving, son. And he said, Ugh. Okay. Well, so. he was going to bring you skydiving. <laughs> don't ever get in a plane with anybody who says, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Well, Mother's Day spending is expected to reach $19.9 billion. This is according to the National Retail Federation's Mother's Day Spending Survey. Wait, tell me again that number. $19.9 billion, billion with an R. Oh, my billion. word. Billion. Uh, that's a survey of 6,600 consumers. I mean, a decent amount. On average, the American, each, uh, each person will spend about $162. In fact, if you want to be exact, $162.94. Wow. Uh, that's down six bucks from last year. People are getting cheaper. Now, you remember how it began? Was it, it was like, it was a, it was a woman, uh, uh, what was her name? Anna, help Yeah, it was Anna three, Jarvis. Was it? Oh, I Anna, was thinking it was another three I name. think her name was Anna, J she may have had a yeah. third name, I don't know. But anyway, she asked Congress to honor mothers, and, you know, I think it was well-deserved. Uh, now, of those uh, surveyed, the uh, NRF found that 25 to 34-year-olds will splurge the most on their mom, an average of $216. Dang. $216. That's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough, Remy. Nearly two-thirds of those surveyed said they will shop for their mother or stepmother. 22% will shop for their wife. 9% <laughs> will shop for their daughter. Interesting, and six percent are going to shop for their grandmother. This now, Sunday. see, and that—that's the slippery slope, man. Because it if is, you it's a problem. if you yeah. go, same thing with dads. I I yeah. love all the fathers in my life, you know. Yeah. But I'm not going to go out and shell. I'll buy a really nice card. I, you know, I, and that's fine with Sorry. me too. I, that's fine I'm with me like too. That. Now, of course, when my kids were real little, I bought the Mother's Day gifts. Oh, sure. And, and, and that, but that continued and it never, never really stopped until so, a couple of years ago. Oh, so it did finally stop. Well, it did. I, you know. <laughs> or you had not shopping as soon as we finished. Well, I, I, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I'm sort of afraid to stop anymore. Uh, okay, very quickly. More than because this went on and on, but, but more than sixty percent are going to buy mom flowers. About $2.3 billion on flowers. That's what they're saying. 43% wow. are going to buy mom a gift card. Let her. I like that idea, by the way. Let That's her pick nice. the gift. Sure. Mom's loved ones, they say, will also buy books and CDs. CDs. $480 million. Housewares and gardening tools. That's another one. Personal experience gifts. That's like a day at the spa. Right. Right. Okay. And then jewelry. $3.6 billion is going to be spent on jewelry. Oh, my. And the only other thing that's going to cost more, uh, other than flowers, is going to be uh, a brunch or dinner. That's the big day, you know. Nobody else knows how to cook, I guess, except mom, so they bring her out. <laughs> that's that's been the story. Anyway, uh, just some interesting Mother's Day that stats is on that. Wild. To expand on that. Um, so, have you heard of the futon generation? No, and you mentioned this earlier. Yeah. The futon generation. No, is that like the Pepsi generation, or is uh, kind this? of? Uh, except uh, in this case, it involves the younger millennials, uh, and they call them that because they are. Uh, well, they're a little nomadic, shall we say. Okay. They're not settling down. Home right. ownership rates are falling, but they say the dream of home ownership is actually alive and well in millennials. They're, they're just putting it off, all right? They're, they're getting out sure. of college. They're looking at what their parents may have gone through, you know, five, six, seven years ago and realize, you know, maybe I don't want to put all my dough into a house. And right. so they're renting. They're staying at home with the folks. They're, you know, uh -huh. staying in an apartment with friends, whatever. Uh, they have such vivid memories of the housing crash uh, that they've decided they're going to they're going to wait. They're going to be sure. really financially stable before they venture into home ownership, which is interesting. Well, and that's that's a good idea. And, and plus, even after the housing drop and right. all that stuff, it's come back a little bit. But it's still it's still expensive. And you get a lot of kids who aren't uh, making a ton of money. Right. I mean, if you're in your 20s, you're probably, I don't care what you say, probably not making a whole lot of dough. 
Probably not. And houses are still more expensive just on, on a relative basis. Well, they also say, too, that uh, on for the most part, most of these people who are of that age group want to be in urban areas where they can be yes. close to one another and they don't necessarily have to have, you know, the, the be in the suburbs with the single family dwelling, the little ranch style house with, you know, <laughs> they're, they're a three two. Of, they're recreating what it means to be a 20 year old. I think that's yeah, kind of cool. I think, it, I think you know? it shows a lot of responsibility yeah, and, and it's like kind that. of a cool thing. Well, and speaking of people around that age, this, this was in for Market Watch. American teens don't want to work is this is this true really teens i guess is what they're talking about uh so not necessarily obviously people in their 20s aren't teenage but uh the the number of teens with summer jobs has fallen roughly 30 percentage points since the late 1970s when you wow. and i were sort of in the middle of our teenage years right now in 1978 nearly three and four teenagers about 72 percent of teenagers and these were kids aged 16 to 19 uh held a summer job but of last year, fewer than 40%, fewer than 4 in 10 teens held a summer job. That's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So where do they get their money? That's my question. Well, that's the thing. And you it, and you know, I worked because we wanted to be able to afford gas to put in our $100 car. Well, I'm going to venture out, and I'm, this isn't a criticism, but I, and it, maybe it is, is, is uh, mom and dad. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's easier. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get it. I, 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 I'm guessing, again. It's been a steady decline, and I'm looking at this graph, and I'm seeing it just go right down. <laughs> That's it's crazy. amazing. Even in good times, they're not getting jobs. Now, during the dot-com boom, they say, in the late 1990s, when national unemployment was only about 4%, I mean, it, we were as close to full employment then as you could get. Right. Uh, roughly 6 in 10 teens held summer jobs. And they said even recently, with the economy recovering, fewer teens are opting for jobs. Uh, the, the, the summer job gain was down 3% from the summer payrolls in 2012. So I don't know what they're doing. That really surprises me. What are they doing? I, uh, and, and they're saying they don't want a job and they're not getting a job. Oh, God. My, my kids couldn't wait to get a job because they knew they weren't going to get any money from me, I guess. <laughs> well, well, mine were too. And our, 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 our kids are probably in the millennial age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I wasn't, I'm, I'm kind of cheap. I'm not one to pass out money. But, I mean, I remember my dad talking to me. I turned... Uh, 15 mm -hmm. and said time for a job yeah and i was waiting for it it was on my birthday dinner <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget that enjoy that meal because it's going to be the last That's free it. one <laughs> i was at the charcoal house as i recall and i'm sitting there and he said and he was absolutely right and so i mean 15 you can't a lot of times you can't get a work permit until you're 16 right but i right. was able to get one and so i got a job and i what i did well, i'm i mean i'm walking around the businesses you go down up and down the street. And sure. You just keep put applications. You pound the pavement. In. So the question is, and we don't have teenagers watching or listening. No, I'm but guessing. I just do wonder. What, they have they they have to have money for incidentals somewhere. Well, all right. Tell you, you boomers, if you have kids or grandkids that are of that age, know. ask them and let us know, would you? Email us. Go to boomersbraintrust.com and just tell us what they're doing. I want to know. Yep. Inquiring minds want to know. We're out of time. Uh, we appreciate you watching and listening to the show. If you need the brain trust, as I said, it's boomersbraintrust.com. Click on the Ask the Brain Trust link. For Dinah Smith and everyone else, I'm Johnny Dean. Have a great weekend.